So I'm going to go back in here uh, with one of these. And let's say I want to add some, some ports in these regions. Um, let's wait until server saves. So in layers, uh, we're still recording. I think we're recording. Are we recording this? One second. What's recorded? Oh, no. Delete that. Sorry. Yeah. So the first one is for the horn thing. Let's create a new one. Um, and on top of creating a new layer, I like to create a store morph target. So in the morph target palette here, I just click on store morph target. And that way I can remove bits and control the intensity. So that's why you have layers and you have um, morph target. So the layers allows you to control the intensity of something. So you can, you, you can push things how, uh, you can reduce the intensity uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. So like you can take this lighter and make it, okay, like an opacity thing. So this, is, this detail is gonna be this 50% intense or more intense or whatever, right? So that's just the layers. But with the morph target, you can actually remove or decide where to place details. So that's why having a combination of two when you're detailing is really powerful. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of this sort of chicken, chicken skin. And I'm doing this very quickly. I would definitely spend a bit more time than what I'm doing here. But I wanna give you the, like I said, the full workflow before we wrap up. Um, this part of the neck, I'll do, yeah, I'll do this. But then um, this, this same alpha, if I press Alt, I can sort of push it out and create those sort of chicken skin with the bumps. In fact, could be also something I could do here, just pressing Alt over what I already did. I mean, I'll, I'll probably do a different way for this. Um, but yeah, just want to show you. Okay, so now I have a bunch of details. Um, they're cool and everything. Um, but they're in areas that I probably wouldn't want to have the same same sort of detail. Uh, now, before I fix that, another tool that is really powerful is the contrast delta. So you have contrast target and contrast delta. Uh, contrast target uses a morph target. So you have a morph target and you want to contrast whatever you, uh, whatever your stroke goes over base on a morph target. But that's like, that's a bit more, it's not complicated, but that's another thing. Uh, the simplest one is the contrast delta. So you can click on that and I'm gonna do a quick save just in case, because the process behind of how this brush works might be a little bit tricky for you know eight million polygons. Um, it should be okay. So I wanna focus on this area, and I wanna use this brush. And what is is what it's going to do is create contrast on the details, so you can enhance the the strength of those details, right? So I'm gonna go over this. You see, it takes a while to get started. But I'm just pressing, depending on how hard I press as well, I'm sort of like sharpening and increasing the, the strength of those details in certain areas. So that's really, really cool technique for, you know, creating details. <laughs> um, all right. So let's say we are happy with this. You know, I just increase the, the strength of this. So that's kind of like what the cassowary, you know, in some areas at least. Um, but we can also use the smooth peaks. So when I use the smooth peaks, and smooth some of these pores right here. You see, so it's getting closer to, to that shape that I wanted to go for, uh, but then I'm gonna use the Morph Brush. So let's click on the Morph Brush. It's a, a brush that comes with ZBrush. Um, and this Morph Brush is going to look at the store Morph target that we have, um, and it's going to allow us to sort of revert this back. So I can just, start erasing certain areas that I know I don't want to have this type of details. And I can be very precise with the size of my brush. So I don't want to have any of that in the big area. So I'm going to remove that. So it's kind of like a, an eraser type of thing. I don't want to have it in here as well. Maybe not as prominent. And I'm just going to fade it into the other details. Now, this is very different from, uh, from a smooth brush because the smooth brush is just going to average the, the difference in the points. This is literally reverting back to um, what we had before, thanks to the morph target. That's why it's one of the most valuable tools for sculpting or adding details. 
All right, so that's it. So you'll see I have, this is my morph target. I can click on switch. Just to, this is what I had before when I saved the morph target. Now this is what I have with the details. Now on top of this, we can stop recording and we can reduce the intensity. So maybe you maybe went overboard um, with, the, with this contrast delta and you can just reduce it. So that's why it's really powerful to combine these two because you have the morph target to save a stage of the model so you can erase bits and pieces and you have the, the layer so that you can control the intensity of those details. Uh, but I'm happy with, let's say, this portion. Uh, I'll definitely have to come back here and, and tweak it. Like, for example, the, let's remove this because in the, let's record the layer again. Uh, when you have poly paint, every time that you start recording, it's going to enable that as well. So I'm just turning that off. Um, all right. So I don't want to have this type of four details around the, the eye. That's going to be a slightly different type of detail. So that's another important uh, thing to remember. Not, you know, not every single portion of the, the skin or the head uh, would have the same type of detail. So you can create multiple, you know, brushes for multiple things. I'm going to do one more thing just to show you some more custom brushes uh, of what I would use. So I'm going to create a new bro a new layer. Uh, I'm going to delete the previous one and store a new one. So including this bit. And I'm going to bring in, so I have another brush uh, pack called the skin brushes. So I already have some some of the you know, the stuff that I show you how to create in here. Uh, one that I really like for this type of organic creatures is the uh, lip detailer. So I'm going to use that. Uh, this one creates, allows you to create like falls and of skin really easy. So um, that's something that I probably would use to enhance this a bit more. Even after I added those, those details, you see how, how it sort of creates the nice contraction of the, of the skin, uh, especially here around the neck with a larger brush size and around this area as well. So again, I'll, I'll do this with a bit more, a bit more thoroughly, but I um, just wanted to, to cover all the steps that I'm going to use uh, in my homework and your homework. Uh, another one that could be interesting is from a different brush pack uh, for insects, actually. So it's called the insect close-up pack. And for this one, um, I could use actually yeah, you can use the insect pack, but I think it would be better if I use um, the creature skin detail. So this is another pack just for creature stuff. So there's one uh, that is pretty cool, uh, this one right here, that allows me to create these sort of patterns, and it just changes the size depending on how, how hard I press. So that one, that's the type of detail that I'm thinking to, to add to the, to the top of the head, because it's not like... I mean, it's bumpy, and there's, I think there's heaps of details in here, but it's not, it's not overpowering compared to, let's say, the, these ones here, the, the pores, right? So that's kind of like the balance that I'm trying to, to create. Like, even though it is a, it's an area that has surface variation and surface details, it is not as complex or strong as these other bits. Um, and I'm reducing the brush size here and just adding a bit more just so that it transitions nicely into the more fleshy areas. And using the smooth peaks, I can also soften that transition. So it's a combination of all the tools basically that I've, that I've given you. Um, but uh, as you can see, there's no, there's no magic trick really. It's just going through the process um, and adding those things. And of course, uh, having some custom brushes could help, definitely. Um, but it will just help in the, in the speeding up the workflow. Um, ultimately, no, there's nothing that beats manual um, processes to add details. And I'm going to stop that one here. And I just want to wrap it up, showing you like a, a comparison of how things have progressed. So you can really see that concept that I mentioned before about uh, sticking to, to the program and, and trust the process. Okay, so this is this is where we are right now. Shift S. And what we started with today was this thing. And I'm gonna sh I'm gonna screenshot this because there's a, an important concept I want to highlight with this as well. So let's crop this just to keep it here. Uh, by the way, this is all completely unrelated to the workshop, but uh, this is another really good use for pure ref and 
I, this is how I also use it. And it's basically to keep track or to document your process. So as you can see, uh, this is something that I've used uh, quite a bit. Just a screenshot what I'm doing and put it into uh, PureRef. So I can see an evolution of what I'm doing uh, and I can keep track and document my process as well. And it could be helpful for me in the future, but it could also be helpful for someone else if I share it. So that's what I do with PureRef as well. Now, um, as you can see, there's, uh, there's a massive change in terms of like the polishing of the of the concept from what we started with today those you know bunch of objects put together and mushed together into something that has uh, a bit more intentionality in the design it has more um you know it has more appeal to it i think um and you know this is just part of it i, I still have to do more details and probably refine some of the secondary shapes as i mentioned uh, which is something that i'm planning to do but um there is there is some there's a massive leap let's say into the polishing of the character. But one of the crucial things that I would like to point out, and hopefully you can see it, is that if you squint your eyes or if you know we move further away, I mean, not that much, um, the silhouette is fairly the same thing. The primary shapes have not changed. And that's one, I would say, the number one takeaway of the entire workshop, I would say, uh, is that that if you have the primary and secondary shapes in place, if you spend the time figuring out those volumes and the transitions and making sure that it's not lumpy and that it has like a bunch of like things sticking out, um, if you consciously change those things and create those proportions um, nicely, then everything else falls into place really easily. And like I said, there's no much difference in terms of the volumes. I could, um, you know, I can create the silhouettes of these two creatures of these two stages of the creature and they will be fairly similar right uh, and that is a very good thing that between something very co very concept and sketchy uh, to something a bit more polished the difference is is barely visible it's just like more conscious decision of how to transition into things so obviously uh, this this bunch of pieces here that make the cranium it just it just turned to be out like like this very simple clean um portion of the mesh and then i just move all those concentration of details to the neck roughly so uh, that's one of the main difference i uh, hopefully you can see that the the pieces that around the head in the in the blocker is kind of like the busiest part of them of the concept but then when i started polishing that cl that cleanness or like that that busyness sorry of the bunch of objects in the head uh turned out to be a bit cleaner and then i translated or balanced that clean is with more details around let's say the the neck uh and i think that kind of like works uh, nicely as well um and you in a way so it sort of like breaks down the it, like i said before it it creates a bit of hierarchy because it breaks the masses a bit more so you have the top of the head that is relatively clean um you know strong shapes then you have the from the eyes down or the beak down to the neck it becomes a bit more wobbly and uh, lots of details and then you it fades into the second mass of the you know the thorax or the um yeah the, the torso of the character so it sort of like creates that hierarchy or division um again it's not necessarily a conscious decision it's just something that because i've done this a few times it sort of like it pops into my head and like i i know that they're like easy uh easy things that i can do to make sure that the design is readable and that it's appealing uh but yeah to summarize all of that, uh, I would say that the, the main takeaway of today's uh, session is that just make sure that you're happy with this section. You're happy with this. Don't rush into building details uh, because it is easier. So, um, and that's another thing why I mentioned yesterday, like don't don't try to dynamize everything and start doing details because you might as well end up with something that doesn't look as polished. Uh, and that is that is the result of rushing this process of setting and pushing those details or pushing those objects into place uh, until you have something solid so in the next workshop we are going to jump into substance painter so um here we go so the first stage would be to understand the workflow it's a very simple sort of technique that um, i think would be very powerful for any type of material uh, so we're going to create something very organic uh, then i'm going to show you how to modify that and how to apply it uh, in different ways and create even more details surface details within the texture with normal map so um what i was saying is not all details have to be done in zbrush you can leave let's say the pores and things like that for substance as well um, and then we're gonna customize with mask and 
you know, I'll show you how to do manual painting of certain things and to variate the design.